Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will be using a popular indicator called Relative Strength Index or RSI for short to determine if Bitcoin is being overbought or oversold. Now before we begin if you like the videos on this channel then be sure to click that subscribe button and that like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel hit that bell notification. Now I'm currently on Google's website called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it easy to start programming in Python so all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this code you're going to want to click on file then click on new notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell open up for you. Now in this cell I'm going to put in a description and comments about the program so I'm just going to type this program determines if Bitcoin is overbought or oversold. And with that being said, I should also say that the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice. So invest at your own discretion and make sure to do your own research before making any sort of investment. Okay, so with that being said, let's continue programming. So I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button here in the top left. And in this cell, I'm going to import the dependencies. So I'm going to import pandas as pd. I'm going to import numpy as np. And I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm going to give the plot a style. So I'm just going to type plt.style.use. And I'm going to use the 538 style. So now I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes. OK, so I didn't. Everything looks good. Let's create a new cell. And now I plan on loading the data. So I'm going to load the data for Bitcoin. And to do that, I need to use Google's library. So from google.colab, I am going to import files. And then I'm just going to type files.upload to upload the file. So let's go ahead and run this and click on choose files. And I'm going to upload this btc.csv file. So the file is uploaded now. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to store the data. So I'm going to create a variable called df and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And then I'm going to input the name of the file, which is btc.csv. And next I want to show the data. So I'm just going to type df. So let's go ahead and run this. And now we can see that we have 528 rows of data from this data set and seven columns. And those seven columns are date, high, low, open, close, volume, and adjusted close. And we can see that this data contains data from the date December 8th, 2019 to May 21st, 2021. And also I can see that these indices are all integer values, which I'm going to change to be the date instead. So let's go back up here and let's set the date as the index. So I'm going to set df equal to df.set underscore index. And let me just press escape here. And then I'm going to put pd.datetime index. Okay. And then I'm going to input df date dot values. So let's run this again. And it looks like I messed up somewhere. Let's see where right df dot set underscore index pd dot date time up uh, right here this needs to be a capital i and then df date dot values all right so let's run this one more time and now we can see that the date has been set i'm sorry uh yes the date has been set as the index now all right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to create and plot the graph. So this can be done uh, fairly easy. So just type plt.figure 
and then give the figure a figure size. So I'm going to set fig size equal to 12.2 inches wide or a width of 12.2 inches. And then I'm going to give this a height of 4.5 inches. Okay. So next, let's plot the data. So just type plt.plot. And I'm going to make the, the date be on the x-axis. So just type df.index for the x-axis. And then for the y-axis, I will use the close price from our data set. So that's df close. And then I want to give this a label. So I'm going to set the label equal to close. And I want to give this plot a title. So just type plt.title. And I'm going to call this close price. And I want to give the x axis a label. So type plt.x label. And I will call it date, or the label will be date. And then I want to give the y axis a label. So type plt.y label. And it will be the price in USD. And then I want to show this graph. So I'm going to type plt.show. And now let's run this. Okay, so there we go. We now have this nice graph showing the close price. And what we can see from this chart is that Bitcoin's price increased somewhere around January 2021. We can see an increase. And then, of course, it continuously increased over some time. And currently, the price has dropped. So it's looking like a downward trend right now. So is it being oversold right now? Well, the RSI indicator has been used many times to determine if it is or isn't oversold. So that's exactly what we're going to calculate next. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. All right, so now in this cell, I'm going to calculate the relative strength index, or RSI for short. So I'm going to create a variable called delta, and I'm going to set this equal to df close dot diff, and I'm going to input the number one here. All right, next I'm going to remove any NA values from delta. So I'm going to set delta equal to delta dot drop in a okay and next I'm going to create a variable called up and I'm going to set it equal to delta dot copy so I am just making a copy of delta and all the data in there and I'm going to create another variable called down and set it equal to delta dot copy as well OK, now I'm going to change all of the values within up that are less than zero to zero. So here, just type up and then set any value for up that is less than zero, set it equal to zero. And then for down, I want to set any value in down that is greater than zero. I want to set it equal to zero. OK, so that looks good. Next, let's create a variable called time underscore period. And let's set it equal to 14. And next, I want to get the average gain. So I'm going to create a variable called AVG underscore gain. And I'm going to set it equal to up dot rolling. And I will give this a window equal to the time period that was just created. And I want the mean of this. OK. And now I'm going to calculate the average loss. So I'm just going to highlight this here. I'm going to copy it using Control C. And I'm going to come down here and paste it using Control V and just change a few things. So I want the average loss. So I'm going to create a variable called AVG underscore loss. And I'm going to set it equal to down dot rolling. 
All right, but I want the absolute value of all of this. All right, so that looks good. Now with this information, I can calculate the relative strength. So I'm gonna create a variable called RS for relative strength. And I'm gonna set it equal to the average gain divided by the average loss. Okay, now I can get the relative strength index. So I'm gonna create a variable called RSI. And I'm gonna set this equal to 100.0 minus 100.0 divided by 1.0 plus RS. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, everything looks good. Let's create a new cell. And now I want to plot the RSI. So just type plt.figure and let's give our figure a figure size. So I'm gonna set the figure size equal to 12.2 by 4.5. And then I want to plot RSI. So I'm going to type rsi.plot. And I want to show the plot. So I'm going to type plt.show. So let's run this. And now we can see our RSI chart. OK. So let's create a new cell. And let's add some, some RSI signal lines that will tell me if Bitcoin is overbought or oversold. So here we're going to plot the RSI with overbought and oversold RSI lines or levels. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called fig and x, and I'm going to set them equal to plt.subplot. I think it's subplots with an s, yep. And we're going to input 1 and 1. And then we're going to give this a figure size. So I'm going to set the figure size equal to, this time I do 15 by 5. And I'm going to create a variable called x0. And I'm going to set it equal to rsi.plot. And we're going to set x here equal to x equal to x. OK. And now let's give our plot some of those those lines, some of those RSI lines, right? That will tell us if Bitcoin is indeed overbought or oversold. So I'm going to create, um, or I'm going to just type x0.xh line, and I'm going to put in the 30 uh, line here. So 30, I'm going to give it a color. The color will be green. So that looks good. I'm just going to highlight this and copy it using control C. And then I'm going to paste this about five more times. And there we go. And I'm going to change just a few things. So I'm going to make this 70. And here will be 20. This will be 80. And then 10 and 90. OK, so here I will put yellow for the color for these two and red for the color for these two. OK, so let's go ahead and run this. All right. And now this tells me if that RSI, uh, if the RSI plotted line goes below any of these three levels down here, that is a signal that the asset, in this case, Bitcoin, is indeed oversold. So what we can see here, we can see that the RSI for Bitcoin is below this yellow line. So that's where the RSI is equal to 20. So it's below that. And it's actually pretty rare for, for assets to hit this red line here. But it is possible. And right now from this chart, it looks like Bitcoin is indeed oversold. So this may be a good time to buy. But of course, again, make sure to do your own research before making any sort of investment. Well, that's the end of the video. If you want to start an investment portfolio of your own, then you can click on the link below and get two free stocks valued up to $1,850 on Webull when you deposit $100 or more. 
And don't forget to grab $10 worth of Bitcoin using the BlockFi link below when you deposit $100 or more. Thanks for watching. And thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on Patreon.com. If you would like to be a supporter on Patreon.com, then I will leave a link in the description below for that as well. Again, thanks for watching. And I hope you all have a great day. And I will see you in the next video.